Good morning everyone, my name is Chris from Two-Headed Wolf Gaming and welcome back to Fronts of Britannia, our East Anglia campaign. In the last episode, we just started marching towards the south and declared war on West Cx and his vassals. And now we are ready to push on further in, trying to conquer and expand the territories, defeat all the, our, the opposers that we might meet while trying to balance our economy we've really tanked our economy by declaring war on West CX because the people of uh, of England like the territories that we had our under our control felt a bit how would you say betrayed or they just didn't like the fact that we declared war on their own people however our viking army are are more on our side they are a lot happier they feel more favored that we've declared war on these factions so successful propaganda people are pleased with the extent to which art has become intertwined with the culture and consider your rule just and fair for this reason this has led to a wave of contentment across your lands, providing us with plus three public order. Elric, the general, became courtly from this particular building. I think it's one of the town's hall or something. Providing him with plus one to loyalty, plus one influence and plus one command. Elric, because he's in a area with a mint or a martyr mint, he has plus 5 to corruption from being rich. Oh, Let's man, use this army to take Bring over that. this particular yes. settlement. As now, now we have minus 1 to gold. I believe that this is minus 88. It's probably because with the increased territory we are gaining increased corruptions yeah we are now at minus 64 percent from corruption so we're expanding these areas by a lot but we've also tanked our economy because of corruption one of the things we might want to do is actually upgrade these law fields wherever possible let's take a look at technology like we said we are going to go for roads maybe it's about time we start looking for what would be the quickest way the quickest way to gain more money um there's no research in the civic right now that would provide us with more money we can't go for rural enterprises it's gonna take us six turns but it's going to provide us plus 15 percent extra income from farms we're going to the economy mm. we could go higher taxes like at this point maybe a higher tax would be good Let's see, if we were looking at summary, does it say from what we are gaining all this god? Unfortunately not. So we don't know exactly if if the cash from the if the cash from the farms are will be good enough for, for us. Let's see. So this is our public order at the moment. We have this plus three right now. So if we do increase our taxes, right, we gain minus 200% from the wrong allegiance. However, this is mitigated by one of our traits, or one of our researches. At least it's going to be at half the penalty. And we do gain a base minus 5 penalty to public order. Take a look at all these regions. They'll be fine. It looks like they'll be fine at least. We gain plus 15% extra food production, giving us a lot more food and a little bit of gold. So we're getting increased gold. And if we do now go back here, tax the province. 
we're still having we still have a lot of food and gaining a bunch more gold in this territory we do tax the province now as you can see we're getting a little bit of gold nothing special nothing as i expected like i thought it would be a whole different ball game however it isn't we're gonna leave this research to finish uh no let's just go straight this will stay at one turn but let's go straight for this extra income from farming because we might not be able to keep this up for more than three turns or what is it six turns six turns my warriors are ready this army will stay still for Gothrum, our king he has built his siege weapons let's go to war on the world map on the world map on the battle map and see what they have to offer they've got quite strong infantry as you can see like these swordsmen they have a few levels they're quite veteran but this is a governor unit it doesn't show us it shows command governance and zeal at zero but i do doubt that i think there's just something that we do not see a, a zero level governor at 45 it's not impossible but i doubt it we shall see at least they're level one all these troops which he, it's a bit weird for ycx to have level one troops but we'll see go to war we are not gonna attack from this side we're definitely going to attack from a different one at this moment like we went through there before now that i look better at the map there's a gateway here Let's see how we do on this side. Let's try a different angle of attack and see what it has to offer to us. On our siege weapons, I don't want them. On our siege weapons, I want my best troops. So I'm gonna put a sword unit here, a sword unit on this side, these Anglian champions here, and let's see which one is better this has more armor slightly less melee skill but not a whole lot of difference we will do like this and like this have our archers here in front do a bit of skirmishing our cav will stay behind waiting for the gates to be broken i will keep these the rest of our troops somewhere here Chosen by Odin. Battle away. behind the siege weapons and before Bowman. this battle starts let's just take a look at our Stay king first orders. of all is this our king this is our king and here he is with a golden crown ready for war let's take a look at the shield biters i don't believe we've looked at them recently at our troops like these shields are amazing and they have bear pelts on top of their heads spearmen there's nothing special we haven't put money into them these, these are the anglian champions yes as you can see the crosses on their necks being christian and all we've managed to acquire quite an army and let's take a look at these armored archers as well because we haven't looked at them with their strong helmets some leather armor on top it's a good day for them to die right our skirmishes our skirmishers always have to suffer <laughs> Don't know why I left some maniacally there. There you have it. Let's start firing. As I said, we're taking quite a bit of casualties. They do have two towers, they have these archers and javelin man they put their spears 
There are their armies are a little bit more spread out. Don't know how this is going to come into play. They're bringing to the walls a few swordsmen. Which might be a really good idea for him. Let's split these troops. Let's bring these guys over here. Where's the fight? With these troops over this to this side. Apparently our Axemen started setting fire to the nearby villages. Like ah so if you don't know, because we haven't played with this mechanic really, there's settlement damage. If if we cause a lot of damage, they will suffer some morale to penalty. And I think that the more the town is destroyed, maybe this is a mechanic only in Attila. Maybe it does apply in this game as well. The more the town is destroyed, the more you can sack it for. But we could have spread out some troops here, here. Maybe some of our calf, right? This in these outside settlements, and they set fire to the nearby areas in order to decrease their morale. Let me write this idea down, and maybe we'll test it next time. So I wrote it down, so we don't forget it. We shall see if, if it's true or not. Spearman, I don't want you to be the first stop. You are getting some fire. Go into Shield Castle. Shield Castle puts them into this kind of formation that is good against cavalry charges and arrow fire or missile fire. Good. Go on top. You go and charge into the spearman. I'm going to bring another unit to take care of those archers. Go through here. For them, I'm gonna ask them to go up as well. The king is getting fired upon. Let's bring these troops to the top as well. You go forward. You keep putting some pressure on that spear unit. Uh, we are being attacked by swordsmen, so I guess we're doing a bit. Uh, we're changing the targets. You, you too. Go here. This other unit of swordsmen. I want you to come. Come here. Capture the gates, please. No, not there. The battle is turning in our favor. Yeah, like this. Sit over here. The battle is turning in our favor. I don't think it was in their favor by too much. They are bringing some more swords in. We're gonna change the target once more. Let's do metal, since we have this ability. Available for us. For the bowman. Hey, you. Go there. Go attack them. Our archers shall stay behind. These swordsmen are not really capturing the gate. Go there. These troops don't sit still. Charge them out. Spread out. Attack them. Pressuring them. We're not suffering a lot of casualties. Their troops are not that higher. They don't have the high quality troops that some of the other factions had, where we really had some troubles. Okay, put more pressure. Let's go further in. They're bringing more troops. I want to engage with our king. We have captured the gates. We've captured the gates. 
they don't have a lot of units still moving. I don't think I have to run after these archers. But I will bring the cap just in case. I think at this point we can just fast forward it. Yes. It's over. There we have it, Dorsester is ours, and on the next turn we will have this beautiful building of Oxana Fort, uh, Oxan Oxna Forda. So Westiax has this huge town over here with only this grand fruit plantation, and they have a garrison quarter which will provide us with minus 50% to enemy campaign movement range in the area. The area is not that big, it's not the most important place to have this kind of building. We're definitely not getting a lot of money, I don't want the church here. The villa estate, I'm not sure. So there's not a whole lot of buildings that could actually produce anything for us. We can put in a workshop. This area is pretty good. Like we can add a law field. Does law field at the max level spread around? No, it does not. So at this point, I'm not sure I really want to keep this. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna repair the church and leave it at that. The area is not gonna produce us a lot of money either way. Maybe build, start building these grain pits for the extra food. Let's just do that. Let's put a grain pit here. We'll see this through. And I think that's about it. You gotta lie on us. For this army, as I said, we'll keep you there for now. Let's start this battle as well. They have about the same army. Hmm. This guy is 51. Well, I don't know. Maybe we can't see him or maybe they're just set up to do to be like this. We're gonna have to experiment a little bit with this difficulty, see if something changes when we increase the difficulty, or maybe we could look for some modding that gives them abilities. And we're fighting unfortunately on the same map, and on in the rain, so we can't really set fire to the villages. Uh, for this particular battle, I will just bring our troops over here. Yeah, let's do that. Let's use these troops. Start over here and march there. Oh, yeah. We're gonna go through the woods. Not gonna be that big of a deal, but we're going to be protected. Once again, actually, yeah, I'll do the same idea. Put the best troops we have as far as fighting in close quarters. We'll put them on the ladders, we'll let them take the initiative. It's gonna help us to break through their defenses rather than having the more weaker ones that take longer to, to take over the walls. So let's do this. Where's the fight? Axemen! Command us for our Control archers. You, you start attacking the archers. Become a little bit of a target for them. And for the rest of these troops, let's 
just do this. And we're gonna walk instead of run. Do a fast forward. Let's take a look through the villages while, they, while that happens. When I see these villages, it really makes me want to play a, a medieval city builder as well. They're, when I said at the beginning that I really like to go into a theme, like this is why I'm talking about it. It's a sensation that I, I want to download and play all the games that have something to do with it. And I want to read books about it and I want to watch documentaries that are tied to this kind of uh, this kind of history or theme, thematic uh, induced period. Are you that type of person too? Are you the type of person that just enjoys like one theme or are you the type that goes into different kind of interest and delves deeper into them? I might ask this question even sometimes in the future because I am, I am curious to find if people would enjoy this type of experience like this time of I was thinking of the games that I might want to play with you guys in the future that I would, would like to talk about with you and some of them don't surround this kind of medieval battles and really go into different cultures like even when you have to talk in the Total War series like they put out the Three Kingdoms right which is centered around China and it's more of a fantasy like it's it's that type of like the legend of Olympus of China right with uh, but not with gods with factions and with it's a lot of history there, but pushed to the limit on how s s mythical the warriors w were and what they did in, in the battles and everything. So that's that's another game that I would like to play. Like the Chinese history could be interesting to interesting to to explore, and we could play. The, the Total War Three Kingdoms, favor. and there's also the Three Kingdom series where they have that kind of action. What, what would you call it? I'm not sure what the style name would be. Basically, you choose one of the characters from one of the factions, or you go through the campaign and you find out the story and your characters level up and you pick skills and you have to go around the map with that character and fight and you and we have to do certain objectives and there's bonus objectives and there's tactics you know i i found i played three kingdoms before like this action game one the dynasty warriors that's what it's called right dynasty warriors and i enjoy that experience as well so i'm curious if uh, if i would go and explore this type of thematics if this would be something that you'd be interested in Let's check this battle. There's something wrong here because we're getting stuck, and by being stuck, is not we're not doing the best. We should like really let's let's move some of these troops out of this particular battle and engage the rest because they're bogging us down and we're losing troops a, a lot more than we should let's do a tiny plank like this unit has only 32 troops left this has 35 state your orders for such a battle, I don't think that this should be what's happening. Let's focus. 
Let's focus our army on what they should be doing. Bring our spears in as well. For numer numeric superiority. Beast King, his general is breaking. Good, those troops broke. Hey, you start attacking, start engaging them. Good. Now move on. Move on here. You, the general. Go engage that side. Let's fast forward it just a tiny bit. Because it seems like we spent ages inside this battle. This general he doesn't have a high level. He's not. He's pretty good, but not that strong yet, so I think this might be one reason why, why they haven't broken already. Like some of our old generals were scarred and they did this. The enemies had morale penalties right, from being in, in the vicinity of these great generals. Good. We've taken over another of their settlement for this area. So for this area, they, we still have patrols. And if we take a look, like they, they have villa estates here as well. This area will be a tiny bit bigger, so it's going to bring us a few advantages. The Stonehenge, to the south of us, there's uh, some sort of stone circle here as well. Enemy blood will flow. I live in uh, I live in Romania, so here is we have this type of stone circles, like from the Dacian periods. Like there was a an old town as well, it's called. The Sarmi Sagetuza, and there's one that the Dacians built, but then the Romans came and took it over, and I believe they burned it to the ground and built another Sarmi Sagetuza, a Roman city, and you can find the ruins still in our country, and they're still being dug up, like trying to see, to uncover more more of his secrets and even in the forest around Sarmisa Jetusa built by the Dacian there are they at least they say there are a lot of riches that have been hidden from the invaders. We took this opportunity over here to defeat these um, rebels. Because why not? It's part of our territory, and I think it's a good idea. And I went to see Sarmi Sajatuda like a few years ago, maybe it's three or four years ago, and I really enjoyed that experience as well, like seeing this part of history, uh, seeing it on TV, it, it felt a bit unreal, like it's not the same feeling as you can imagine, as we'll seeing it in person. Now, let's put him into, into a fortified stance and bring a few more troops in. Bring him a swordsman, another archer. Now, even though he's not armored, no, maybe not do that. Let's just keep this army here. Because I want to come here and just sack this settlement and go back home. Get a bit of money. I don't want to push with this army too far because they might be this many jerby yeah. over here might come and attack us and and then we'll lose it without sense nothing else to do we have no more money let's end the turn 
Well, CX, as I said, see, it's, he's bringing some bigger stacks. He's bringing his 20 army, probably going for Jerby. There's another... There are other troops here in, in the area. I have achieved greater rank. We finished building a market cross, providing us with quite a bit of money. If we do this one more time, we are gaining 5% extra income from all markets fair and 490 gold in total. I don't want to do that. We finished constructing the Abbey of St. Cuthbert or what is it? St. Edmund. We will wait for one turn in order to go to the next level. We want to push for the fame victory as well. We decided that we're gonna do that, so that's Not what we're gonna option. do. The Fury of Tear, they've combined their forces from the stack they had before and they're moving in here. Impossible. There's where CX. Enemy blood you know, I really go. wanted to come here and sack Rest. this village. Actually, let's still do that. It's a bit Agreed. of a risky move. Because now we're in yet. the area. No. But we, if they attack us, we will decide to run away one turn. And if they attack us, we'll have to do the battle. We shall see. Let's take over the, this food stock. Which is perfect. Look at this. So, oh, our king has gives us 14 to public order. A bonus of 14 to public order. And from everything else, we gain... 18. This area will never rebel. And we're getting minus 52 food. Like we're getting 103 from here. What is providing us with this huge penalty to food? The garrison and the royal palace. What was this territory? Was this big? Well, it's quite a centerpiece. It's pretty useful Finally. to have this there. Let's see, what do we do with the rest of the armies? If I look at the time, we're past the 30 minutes, so... I'm just gonna take a minute to think about what our next moves will be and come back to you in the next episode. I thank you very much for watching and for sticking around with this first series that we've put out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.